wherever you live are, in a way, tied together by the males. Wherever you are, if I had your name and address, I could send you a letter. If you had my name and address, you could send me. And who would bring these letters to us? One man, of course. He is called the mailman or the postman. And no matter what the weather, in every neighborhood in the nation, there is a postman who will deliver your mail, rain or shine. Tree, where farms and ranches are often far apart, the postman drives a truck to route. Mail means a lot to people everywhere, because there are often letters from friends or members of the family who live far away. This letter is from Mrs. Peterson's grandchildren, Bob and Betty, who live in California, on the other side of the country. <laughs> Bob and Betty have written to ask grandmother if they can come and spend part of their vacation on the farm. Do you see how exciting a letter can be? Grandmother is very pleased that Bob and Betty want to come. And that night she sits down to answer them and tell them she can hardly wait for them to get there. Do you know why she has written this number after Bob and Betty's address? This is called a zip code number. Zip code numbers tell the people at the post office the city and the neighborhood where the letter is to be. We see the postman nearly every day, but the people we may not see as often are the ones who work in the post office. They help the postmen everywhere deliver the mail. Some of the cost of the U.S. mail service is paid for by the stamps which you buy to put on your letters and packages. People who send letters help the post office workers mail into the proper slot and this is the first step in sorting the mail. To show that a stamp has been used once and cannot be used again, a black mark is made on it. This is called a cancellation. The cancellation shows the town and the state where the letter was mailed. It also shows the date. In rural post offices like this, canceling is usually done by hand. Now, let us follow grandmother's little farther. We find that it is in a sack of mail that is to go by train. A truck takes the sack to the railroad where it is placed in a special stand by the tracks. Most of the trains do not stop at this small town, but they can take the mail sack from the stand at high speed. At the same time, Mail for this town is dropped off. And the man with the mail truck will take it back to his post office. The sack that has been picked up is now in the railway post office car. This is actually a post office on wheels. The men spend their time while the train is going, sorting the letters and packages that are addressed to many different states and towns. The train speeds on through the night. And the next morning, it is in the far west, heading for California. Today, Bob and Betty are eagerly waiting for their postman. And they ask him if he has a letter from grandmother. He tells the children it isn't here yet, but he promises to watch for it and deliver it as soon as it comes. 
Bob and Betty are thinking only of the letter they are expecting. But letters and mail of all kinds are being sent and received by millions and millions of people all over the country. Mailboxes are conveniently placed in every town. Trucks pick up the outgoing mail at regular times and bring it to the post office. The train is now in California and will soon be at the big post office that serves the city where Bob and Betty live. As soon as it arrives, the mail is unloaded. This large post office is a busy place at all hours of the day and night. As soon as the mail sacks are brought inside, they are dumped. The bundles that have been prepared on the train are cut open and the letters sorted into trays. In one of them is grandmother's letter to Bob and Betty. Conveyor belts carry the trays within the post office and take them directly to the post office workers who must do the sorting. Can you see grandmother's letter to Bob and Betty? Surrounding this big city are many smaller towns. All of the mail for each of these towns is placed in its own separate slot. There is a slot for all of the mail for Eagle Rock, the town where Bob and Betty live. Several times a day, each town's mail is placed in a tray by itself. Mail that has been separated as to what part of town it goes to is sacked again and sent by truck to the branch post offices. While the truck is on its way, let's take another look inside this central post office. While much post office work is done by hand, there are many machines that help get the different jobs done. One new machine is controlled by electricity so that it can find where the stamp is and cancel it. This machine cancels letters much faster than can be done by hand. This one post office handles, sorts, and delivers up to nine million pieces of mail a day. Grandmother's letter came by train but a lot of mail is sent by air. Helicopters are sometimes used to take air mail to and from the airport, where it is loaded aboard planes. Mail that is going long distances is often taken by jet planes that can fly from one coast of the country to the other within a few hours. Meanwhile, the mail delivery truck has arrived at the branch post office in Bob and Betty's neighborhood. Their postman, whose day starts quite early, must sort the mail again. He sorts it according to the way he will deliver it on his route. Here is the letter Bob and Betty are waiting for. They won't be disappointed today. They have received the message that was mailed far away in another state. And it means they will soon be on their way to the farm. It took the work of many men, women, and machines to deliver the letter safely. Trains, trucks, and planes help move the mail. But eventually, a man, your postman or mine, 
will deliver the mail on foot in sunny weather or snow or rain. For no matter what the weather, this service goes on all the time. This is the man you can depend on. The postman, rain or shine. <laughs>